Mark, you just made the point in, a, in another question about the importance of even if a church succeeds at uh, harnessing the desire of young people to be together and develops a uh, deeply connected and enmeshed uh, peer-centric youth group, it's the job of the youth minister in the church to draw those young people into the embrace of the entire church. And, and most of us who have read uh, your works and that of some of your colleagues uh, know about uh, Kenda Cressy Dean's critique of the one-eared Mickey Mouse hat youth group that's the mm -hmm. youth ghetto off to the side of the hat. So youth ministers are out there gathering and working and building the relational depth of a relational youth group of young people. I'm now going, I need to get these young people integrated into church. I need to have them part of the multi-generational experience, the body of Christ. That can be hard, and you're up against some headwinds. What practices, what, what, what have you learned that you can share with those youth ministers who are trying to get that drop down or that integration into the whole body of Christ, but finding it's easier to get them together than it is to get them there on Sunday morning? Mm -hmm. Most of our attempts at integrating young people into the life of the church are like a minnow in a whale's mouth. It's, it's just a, we're doing something, but it's making very little impact. Um, you mentioned earlier things like, you know, we're going to put kids on committees, or we're going to do a youth Sunday, or we're going to get kids to sit together and worship, uh, all of which are, are decent ideas and a step in the right direction. I want to suggest a, a single practice that I think is the, is the code breaker on this one. Um, and that is the investment of time to work on this issue. Um, uh, we've got a series of books that we're developing called 30 Day Change. And it's, the idea is it's a, it's a 30 day boot camp to make a shift in your ministry. Uh, uh, the challenge is to spend in the neighborhood of two hours a day, six days a week, working on that singular priority. It's going to take that kind of investment of focused attention, not kind of, okay, we're going to try something, then I'm going to go run my program over here. <clears throat> but uh, I'm going to bet that most youth pastors... Is that would, a $100 bet? And No, this is, a, um, this is a Dr. Pepper for you. Um, the, uh, I'm going to bet that most youth pastors, um, if they would spend two hours a day, six days a week for a month, they crack the code. But most of the time, we're looking for the, you know, some sort of secret formula that I can do with my left hand and my eyes closed while I'm really doing the important work over here. Um, we have uh, we have stumbled into something like this in our church um, in the last year or so. We um, uh, as a youth staff, um, were invited to take over our Sunday night worship service. Uh, it's just a, it's a, you know, uh, more more contemporary music and uh, a little less formal. And we were invited to take that over. And I, I, I looked around the table and I said, "Okay, y'all, if we're going to do this, it's going to." It's going to take commitment, and it means it's going to have to be our number one priority for the next six months. Do we want it? We breathed deeply. We stared at each other and said, okay, let's take it on. And uh, because we believed that kids in worship with adults uh, may be our greatest discipleship opportunity, more than small groups, more than Sunday school, more than youth group, if we can get kids into worship. And it's also a great place to cultivate volunteer young adults. Um, so over the last um, last oh, six months or nine months, uh, that has become sort of taken on a life of its own. As more young adults have come, then there have been more people my age that have been coming. And then there are some folks with young children that are coming. And then there's a group of kids that just go, oh, I just don't want to miss. And it's not like it's a youth group. I think that's part of the magic of it. Part of the reason kids like to come is because it's not youth group. It's not a special program just for them that puts them at the very center of the universe. It's, a, it's something that they are uh, they're worshiping alongside uh, their church family. Uh, one of the images we like to talk about is the difference between uh, a, a youth leader as a camp counselor and a youth leader as a relationship architect. And 
um, a camp counselor has a limited bandwidth on how many people he or she can relate to. A relationship architect is just working to make sure every kid has five, six, ten adults in his or her life. We, we picture it like put the kid in the middle and they're, and they're webbed together. So there's lines to the kid and then there's lines to each of these adults to each other. And Adam, my son, uh, he, he came to me recently and he said, Dad, I don't like that whole, I don't like that whole web thing. I think he got it wrong. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He said, I think putting the kid in the center just amplifies the natural narcissism of our culture for kids. Mm -hmm. We got to put the kid on the outside right alongside the adults and put Christ in the center. And in that community, they are webbed in. Eh, not bad. Um, but it, it, that has been, again, I'm not suggesting that's the, the secret code, but um, that has been one that we've just stumbled into, focusing on we're going to make one thing our number one priority. We're going to give our first attention to that over a series of weeks or months. Um, it, it feels like it's a, this priority, because we know it matters so much, uh, is one we've just got to raise on the, on the priority list for our time, for our, our strategizing, our collaborating.